I came back up from Florida and I was gonna go home and I decided I saw this one uh, 39 foot momentum toy hauler going to California I figured I would take this one and then go home and finish up the stuff I've got to get done I've already done my inspection on the outside walked around took my pictures put my battery in torque my wheels check for damages so far everything looks really good on it um, Make sure all the lights work. I'm ready to go. So after I left, I made it to Effingham, Illinois, to the Petro, where I got fuel, topped off with fuel, and went next door to the Chasers Bar, right there next door to the Petro. And they've usually got parking right there at the bar. They've got really good food. I've been going to, going to the Petro for 15 years. Never made it into the bar until a few months ago, but really impressed with the food. And uh, made it on Joplin, crashed in Joplin for the night. Got up the next morning and made my way on into Oklahoma. This is the Joplin, Missouri scale house. And when I was in the big truck, I got inspected in them scales a couple of times over the years. And they always kind of made me nervous. But since I've been doing this, you usually just get the get the bypass light and just breeze right on through. One thing I really do like about this job. Checking my trailer out this morning, the trim on the back corner right here I guess it wasn't tucked in all the way you can see that so I worked it back in it was all the way out down through here and I didn't want it to blow off so this gentleman here is gonna pull up and let me use his flatbed well, I had to stand on my cooler on the trailer and then get it back in all the way up Maybe at a state. Feeling up here at Petro in Amarillo, and uh, I'm gonna give you a shot. This is how I do it. Since I added the other filler neck over there, I got that one filling the big tank while this one fills the little tank. It works out a whole lot quicker. And then when I'm done, I put that one over there up. Once it pops off, by that time, this one is already popped off. Now I take this one and finish filling it up so I got more control over stopping it on the right money. Shortly after I got in New Mexico, there was an 18 wheeler that had burnt to the ground. The, the trailer had caught on fire and I have video of it, but it got lost in my dash cam. But Google kept telling me to get off on the service road and I heard other truck drivers talking about it. I saw campers exiting off there was one exit that you could barely get to before the backup and then it was like a seven mile backup normally if i don't hear someone talking about it on the radio or i don't have a really good feeling about it i will i won't follow google at all but yeah once i got on this road it was so narrow so bumpy i mean it would just just beat you to death i just slowed down let everybody go i had a line of traffic behind me a mile long and just eased on through here and it, it, it turned out okay it saved me a lot of time but golly what a rough road for a service road and it wound up being like 12 miles long but I still feel like it saved me every bit of an hour but I always got to be careful about Google Google gets you in a mess so I made it on down to Oklahoma and I stayed there for the night and then I drove on across just on the west side of Flagstaff Arizona and stayed there the next night I got up yesterday morning early and drove on into Kingman, which is only a couple of hours. And I realized I wasn't going to make it in time to get unloaded. So I decided to stop in Kingman, hold up for the night, and I had this bright idea that I would get up this morning, say, midnight, well, about midnight, one o'clock in the morning, I'd miss all the traffic going on in and all that. And uh, yeah. I overslept. I slept good for a few hours and I woke up tossed and turned. And so now I'm going to wind up getting there about 1 o'clock this afternoon. I still shouldn't have too awful much trouble with traffic, but, and I feel a lot better. I actually got my nap out, so that uh, kind of not what I was wanting though. I was kind of hoping I would already be there, be unloaded. I had a friend out there who's uh, got family in the area in San Marcos and we were going to meet up for breakfast and all that stuff so I just kind of messed all that up but I figure I'll be there in a few hours and get unloaded and 
probably get headed straight on back home. Um, I think that would probably going to be the plan for the rest of the day. I was talking to my nephew this morning and he had just gotten back from the beach and we were talking about different places to travel and do things, you know, and I was telling him about some of the stuff I've seen coming out here and then coming back empty. Some of the stuff that I've got to actually stop and take in uh, the Grand Canyon. I took a helicopter out over the Grand Canyon. I stopped it. When I was driving a big truck, you couldn't stop and see this stuff. You know, you just couldn't. With this, when you get out and you deliver, you're pretty much in tourist mode on the way back. I mean, you can, you know, you can stop and see things and do things you would normally not be able to do. One of my favorite things about this job so far, and uh, we were talking about, I told him I wish that he was here just for a few minutes just so he could look around and see the landscape. He's never really seen, you know, this part of the country at all. He's never been out west. and. Uh, it just, you know, it, it, to me, it's breathtaking out here. It's absolutely beautiful. This is <clears throat> right here, right inside of the California state line, headed across toward Barstow. And uh, that exit that we just passed, I had a buddy, another driver over here, that had broken down off that exit. He had to sit there, right there, here in the middle of the desert. I mean, if you notice, there's no exits. There's no, rarely ever there's an exit. And if there is, it just goes off and gets right back on and there's nothing there. And that's the way a lot of it is out here. And uh, yeah, I got to thinking about, I've got friends and family that have never even been out here. So I figured I would get a little shot of the drive. But yeah, that guy, he had to sit back there for, I want to say, I want to say close to 30 hours. He broke uh, the belt broke, or the belt, yeah, it broke the serpentine belt on it was a 6.7 Cummins, and I think a 2008 model Dodge, and it broke the belt, and I stopped and picked him up a new belt coming through Kingman, and we got it put on, tried to start it, it still wouldn't start, and I crawled up underneath the truck and looked, and it had, when the belt broke, it came around and grabbed the crank position sensor, and I never knew that on a Dodge that the crank position sensor was on the outside of the, like the timing cover, I mean, it's, it's, it's exposed. And when the belt broke, he come around, grabbed it, and uh, broke it off. So he had to wait for me to go into, into, on in and deliver. And luckily, there was another driver closer than me. When I was going in, they were coming out, and they stopped and picked up a crank position sensor. And he hadn't had any food or anything the whole time he'd been sitting here, except for what we stopped and dropped off to him on, on the way through, which wasn't much. And we got him back going, and we unhooked the batteries, let it reset, hooked it back up, and got it back going. But I couldn't imagine sitting out here for 30 hours just hanging out, waiting on parts, man. I felt so bad for him. But this is pretty much it. I mean, there's about two and a half, probably about two, two and a half hours of this before you get into, get back into. I guess civilization where there's convenience stores and all that stuff. There may be a one here and there, but it's not like it is like it is what I'm used to being from Tennessee. You know, every exit's got something off of it. But this is coming into San Bernardino, and I just think it's a I don't know. It just looks really cool with all the fog hanging over the mountains and stuff. Figured I'd try to get a little clip of this. Like I said it's definitely gorgeous out here so here I am in San Marcos at Holland RV Center great waiting for them to come out and check the unit in everything went pretty smooth up to this point um, I've already let the legs down opened up all the doors got my tag and my signs off and I put them right there on top of the toolbox and like I say, I never put them up until everything that goes in my truck goes in my truck. Then I'll put it up and, you know, always make sure you got a checklist. Don't forget anything. And uh, I've already dropped it off the pin and the whole nine yards. So as soon as they get here to check me in, I'll be out of here. Hope the wind noise isn't too bad. I had to get another shot of this thing all opened up. This thing is freaking massive. 
and awesome on the inside. I would ask to bring, come in and get a picture, but I don't know if they'd let me or not. But Complete with a back porch. A few months ago, I was on my way back from California, and me and another driver decided to stop and go to the Grand Canyon. This is my first helicopter ride, first time ever to the Grand Canyon. It was pretty awesome. Um, if you ever have a chance to go, the helicopter tour is, is the way to go. I mean, it was just an hour-long tour. It was awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. See you next video.